What's up? I'm Vin, and today I want to derive the formula for the nth partial sum of an arithmetic sequence. So this is the formula for the nth term of an arithmetic sequence. So the idea is, when I want to find the nth partial sum, I'm going to prove that this formula is valid. It's, the idea is that I'm adding up the first n terms of our arithmetic sequence. So the first term of an arithmetic sequence is a. Then the next term would be a plus the common difference. Then the third term would be a plus the common difference, but I would be adding it twice, so it would be a plus 2 times d. And then that would be the third term, so the fourth term would be a plus 3 times d. And then I would just keep doing this all the way to the end until I get to the nth term, and I get a plus n minus 1 times the common difference d. So once I get here, now I need to come up with a creative way to come up with this formula. So the technique involved, uh, this the person who gets the shout out here is Carl Frederick Gauss. They call this Gauss's method because of the famous adding the numbers from 1 to 100 problem. But the idea is that you rewrite s sub n, but now you write it backwards. So I would start with the nth term here, the a plus n minus 1 times the common difference. And then right before that, you could see the pattern if we're going backwards. I'd have 3, 2, 1, and then 0 times d. So right before n minus 1, I would have n minus 2 times the common difference. And I would add this up all the way to the end until I get to the first term, which would be a. Okay, so we're just writing things backwards, but there's going to be a pattern that jumps out here that we're going to make use of. So when we add these two terms together, so first what we could do is add the left side. s sub n plus s sub n is equal to 2 times s sub n. And then here, when I do a plus a plus n minus 1 times d, that's just going to give us 2 times a plus n minus 1 times d. So these are the like terms that I could combine here. Then the next two I would add would be these two. And notice when I do a plus a, that's going to give me 2a plus, and then this part gets a little bit abstract, but when I do d plus n minus 2 times d, I'll do that on the side and then we'll erase it. But when I add d plus n minus 2 times d, this might be a little bit tricky to do in your head, but think of it as I have coefficients that I'm adding here. So this is technically like 1d plus n minus 2 times d. So I do 1 plus n minus 2, which is n minus 1. But if you want to see by factoring, I factor out d, and I have 1 plus n minus 2. So this would equal d times n minus 1. Okay, so... That's how I know d times n minus 1, or I could say n minus 1 times d. So when we add d plus n minus 2 times d, we're going to be left with n minus 1 times d. But now I'll just get this out of the way so we have space to complete the proof. So we said this is going to make n minus 1 times d. But we might be able to see the pattern now that every time I add these terms together, I'm going to get 2a plus n minus 1 times d. And I do this all the way to the end. So when I do the last term here plus the last term here, Notice I get a plus a is 2a plus n minus 1 times d. But now if we look at this here, we just have to be very mindful and think about how many of these terms did we add together. Well, s sub n is the sum of the first n terms, and s sub n is still the sum of the first n terms, so we're pairing up n terms together. So this term here that keeps showing up, it's going to show up n times because there are n terms here that we added with n terms here. And when we combine them, there's still going to be n terms in these parentheses. So this is 2 times s sub n equals n times. And we have 2a plus n minus 1 times d. So once again, how many things are we adding together? At the end, we're going to have n terms that all match. So we could just say n times the matching term. 2a plus n minus 1 times d. But now we can rearrange things a little bit. How about we call this 2, two times s sub n equals n times, and instead of 2a, we're going to call this a plus a plus and then n minus 1 times d. And from this step here, notice a plus n minus 1 times d is exactly equal to a sub n. Notice how this term shows up here. We have a plus n minus 1 times d and we have a plus m minus 1 times d. So we can make the substitution here. Let's give ourselves some space. 
what we could say here is that 2 times s sub n equals n times a plus, and this piece that we underlined was a sub n. Now all we have to do is solve for s sub n, so we could divide both sides by 2. So this is going to work out to n times a plus a sub n, all divided by 2. Now in the formula, we just had this piece divided by 2, so it doesn't matter. I could put the fraction over all of this or just this term here. But this is the formula for the nth partial sum of an arithmetic sequence. Okay, well this is going to conclude this video on the proof of the nth partial sum of an arithmetic sequence. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel. And if you've got any requests, just leave the topics you want me to cover in the comments section below. And thanks for watching.